Hello and welcome to the Instituto Cervantes. We continue our cultural program on our YouTube channels in Manchester in Leeds, trying to reach all our audience while we are at home. Today we start a series where we present the links that Manchester and Spain have had with facts and characters like Enrique Tarraylan, Jose Castillejo, or in the case we present today, Maria Malibran. Maria Malibran was one of the most important opera voices of Spanish music in the 19th century. She had a special link with Manchester because it was in the cathedral where she performed her last concert. To tell us about his figure, we have today the conductor of the Michael Haydn Orchestra, Marco Bellassi, who has dedicated to research his biography and her music, to bring an annual concert to the Cathedral of Manchester to commemorate the voice of Maria Malibran. Concert postponed this year by the COVID-19. To learn a little more about this Spanish woman and her music, please watch the video and enjoy with us. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. I'm Marco Bellasi. I have studied uh, conducting in Milan, also violin in Milan, and I've uh, um, and composition and singing. And then I had an idea later on, around 2018, to start my own orchestra, and this came to life in 2019. So this is an original song by Maria Malibran um, that she composed in New York for a recital she did there. And uh, it was very, very important because she was saying farewell to the New York people uh, because she was going back to Europe after a failed first marriage with, um, with an, an entrepreneur um, from America, Malibran, from who she took the surname Malibran. Maria Malibran was the most important singer of her generation. We're talking about the, 19, the beginning of the 19th century. The era of Rossini, of Donizetti, of Bellini, in other words, the great bel canto period of opera. These are operas that are performed every year, the operas of Rossini, the operas of Donizetti and Bellini. So it's the core repertoire of Italian opera. So wherever she went, she caused a storm, a storm of, you know, enthusiasm, of, of people that loved her, people that perhaps hated her, you know, just like the stars of Hollywood today. And, uh, but what we, what is important also to know that she wasn't only a, a normal star, she was exceptional because she was born in a musical family by Manuel Garcia, who was the greatest Spanish tenor, or the greatest tenor of, uh, of that time. And he was the favorite tenor of Rossini. So this guy, Manuel Garcia, was a genius, but was also, a, like all geniuses, he was a little bit mad, you know, but because he wasn't only a great singer, 
he wanted to compose operas. He was a composer. And so they toured around the world with him um, and then he would write his operas while they were touring and then he would he would put on his operas um, so they like they went to Mexico all of the world they toured so that's how Maria Malibran grew up and this I think is very special because she wasn't only a singer she was a musician in the core you know she grew up with bread and butter the music was her bread and butter so, uh, absolutely. So, Maria Malibran is uh, an icon, and that's why a lot of composers loved her. Not only the opera composers like Rossini, Donizetti, Bellini, who adored her, but also composers like Mendelssohn, who you would never think they would be attracted to, to Maria Malibran, but they, they were absolutely, uh, like, fascinated. It was like they went, they went to see her once and they were addicted to her dramatic, sense of drama on the stage. She was an actress as well as being a great singer. The importance of Maria Malibran, this very particular voice, which goes very low and very high at the same time, as uh, it stays in the roles that were written for her. Because of course, composers would, at that time, they would write for singers like a tailor would do a dress, you know, or a suit. You know, they would, they would take the measurements of the voice and put this fantastic, all of her, of her great talents into use in that role. So all of these great roles that are very difficult are difficult for a reason because her voice was exceptional. Well, Manchester in that period was at the heights of its status because Obviously, the Industrial Revolution made it one of the richest cities in the world. Um, therefore, Manchester, together with Liverpool, started to organize very important music festivals, which would bring all of the stars of the music of that era together. And they would commission also very important works to composers. She was called to do a particular concert here. And uh, she came. But unfortunately, just a couple of months prior to this um, festival, she fell from the horse. She, but her foot uh, stayed tied to the horse while it was still galloping out of control. So this was very fatal in a way because she banged her head very badly and she injured herself very, very badly. But she was a woman of fire and she didn't want to give up the, um, the recital and the concert she had planned in Manchester. And she wanted to come anyway, uh, against the, the doctor's advice. So she came, she was very ill, but she, at the night of the performance, she was incredible. Everyone was, you know, out of, you know, like, it was incredible. Her performance, apparently everyone was stood up, it was standing ovation, absolutely incredible. But after that performance, she fell ill again. And this time it was, um, it was very bad. And uh, she died in a Mosley Arms in Manchester, which is very close to the cathedral, which was the venue in, in which she performed the concert. When I read the story of Maliban, I love reading about the singers, these important singers that, you know, really, changed the world uh, or, and changed the world of music and I was and I was reading her story and I'm saying this woman was phenomenal and we are lucky to be in the city where she gave her last recital and what would it be like to do a program in the very place that she gave the last concert and in which she was temporarily buried and I think that would have been very very powerful so I gathered in the program we did some pieces that she wrote because she was a composer as well, like her father. Uh, and, um, and also I gathered some pieces that were written especially for her, like an aria by Mendelssohn. Uh, we had planned uh, to do uh, this concert on the 15th of May um, to do it again because it was so special. It felt so special the first time that we did it. It was really a fantastic concert and we wanted to do it again. So we had already planned, we booked the cathedral once again, the very place 
the special place where we wanted it to be done. Um, everything was ready, but unfortunately, we were caught in this uh, terrible situation of the coronavirus, which is uh, very dramatic for all the world and has caused a lot of pain and still causing pain. Um, so unfortunately, the concert needed to be uh, needed to be postponed and cancelled for for the time being. But we would really like in the future to bring it back. Uh, and there are other pieces also that would be fantastic. Uh, so it would be very nice to do it again, yes. So the video um, is, uh, is taking you in for five or six minutes in this concert in the, uh, and so you, we, you start by hearing the violin concerto in E minor by Mendelssohn, which is such a fantastic piece. But then uh, you, you will hear a little bit, just a little tasters, appetizers of all the pieces that we perform. Um, uh, so you will hear some of uh, Bach's uh, Brandenburg Concerto, which we played with uh, an original Stradivari violin from Manchester uh, that is kept in the Royal Northern College of Music, uh, Music Archives. Um, and uh, so it was very beautiful to have that played by our leader Magdalena, Magdalena Riedel from Austria. And she'll be also giving some uh, speech about the violin, how special it is. And it's, you know, it's a national treasure and a local treasure for Manchester, this Stradivari violin. And then we will be uh, talking about Michael Haydn, of course, who is our signature composer. And we'll have Ben Goldscheider, who has uh, um, recently uh, gone into the final of the BBC Young Musician of the Year competition for the wins and uh, he's now very easy, uh, fantastic uh, horn player. He's going to speak a little bit about the horn concerto by Michael Haydn and then uh, then we'll talk about Maria Maliban and Infelice especially this beautiful aria that Mendelssohn wrote for her uh, with a violin which is a very special piece and uh, yeah, and then we'll wrap it up again with uh, the Violin Concerto by Mendelssohn in E minor. <laughs> together of many creeds of my credo, we say in Italian, beliefs as a, an artist. The Stradivarius is the, the jewel in the crown of the Orientium's historical instrument collection. It's a piccolo violin by Stradivari, um, built in the year 1660, which is 25 years before Bach was even born, so it lived through the making of all Brandenburg concertos. It's a slightly smaller violin, and it's tuned a third higher, and we're going to hear it in Bach's first Brandenburg concerto, which has a big solo part. I'm very pleased that some of our instruments are actually working instruments. They're not just museum pieces that people can go and look at. Sometimes they come out of their cases and they get played. And that's what musical instruments are for in the end, aren't they? It's very interesting. This concerto is very rarely performed. Um, I have done it once before, which I think is actually rare. Um, Mostly home players, they haven't played this piece. Um, but I think it's very beautiful. It's extremely different from Joseph Haydn's concerto. In recent discoveries by musicologists, 
They have discovered that all of the composers Mozart copied. Michael Haydn was the one who he copied most. So it must be a very important composer to Mozart, and I think if he's relevant to Mozart, he needs to be relevant to us as well. well it starts with a slow movement, which is almost unheard of. No other horn concerto that I can think of off the top of my head starts with a slow movement. It's extremely lyrical. Um, whereas the Joseph Haydn trio starts with a very fast allegro in two, and it's very triadic and the, the opposite of lyrical, I have to say. That is my first creed about this concert, to take out even more the name of Michael Haydn. Second creed is uh, to bring the Manchester legacy to the people of Manchester, a very, very great tradition of music, of art, of culture, and in this city, many, many important events happened. For example, the death of Maria Malibran, perhaps the greatest opera singer of the 19th century. She died after performance in this cathedral at the age of 28. She was a composer, and we are delighted to remember her with some pieces that she wrote, along with some pieces that she sang, and some pieces that were dedicated to her by composers such as Mendelssohn. between these two pieces. Um, some parts uh, from the aria really are identical to the main themes um, in the violin concerto. The theme soprano sings, it's in the major key, and, and then in the concerto, of course, it's, it's minor in the beginning, and more to passion art, and piano, and there's this quiet restlessness, so you never know if Mendelssohn was so deeply affected by Maria Malibran's death. exciting things about this concert is that we've actually got the sense of place because we are giving a concert in the very building in which Mally Brown gave her last concert and where the funeral took place. This very, very beloved piece perhaps bears some remembrance of her because it was written after her death and in a way it connects to the aria in Felice he wrote to her. So we hint you this possible connection and we leave for you the rest. Hope you enjoy.